recognized for five minutes. Thank you very much, and thank you for everyone coming to testify today. Last month, NOAA published a proposed rule entitled to establish a vessel speed restriction and other vessel-related measures to protect the rice as whale. This rule is going to have many adverse impacts on communities, port operations, and the economy in my district, as well as throughout the state of Florida. It includes a year-round 10-knot vessel speed restriction within the waters that are between 100 and 400 meters deep, stretching from Pensacola to Tampa. As you guys know, that's a massive portion of Florida. It also requires an additional 10 kilometers in the areas known as vessel slowdown zones. Additional restrictions within the vessel slowdown zones include no vessel transits at night, a requirement that vessels transmitting through that zone, must report their plans to National Marine Fisheries Services, utilize visual observers, and maintain a separation distance of 500 meters from Rice's whales, as well as use and operate automatic identification systems or notify NMFS of transit throughout the zone and report deviations from these requirements to NMFS. Like all Floridians, I believe in protecting Florida's wildlife, especially our threatened and endangered species, but at the same time, we need a common sense solution to ensure that decisions like this proposed rule benefit both wildlife and the industries that operate within the Gulf of Mexico. Unfortunately, this rule would have consequential impacts on the ability of recreational, commercial, and sports fishermen to conduct their businesses, and the impact is not small. In fact, marine time activities in the state of Florida account for about 13% of Florida's GDP and contribute, contribute $4.2 billion in state and local taxes. Other industry impacts impacted by this proposed rule include Florida's 16 public seaports and American waterway operators that move cargo between ports in the Gulf of Mexico. My question is for you, Ms. Bavishi. Um, did NOAA at any point contact stakeholders like these fishermen or waterway operators to discuss the impact this rule would have on their ability to do their work? Thank you for the question, Congresswoman. I want to clarify that NOAA Fisheries is not proposing an additional vessel speed rule on the East Coast. What actually happened is that we received a petition from multiple NGOs for rulemaking to establish a year-round 10-knot vessel speed limit and other vessel-related mitiga uh, vessel mitigation measures in the area referred to by petitioners as Rice's Whale Core Habitat in the Gulf of Mexico. So just to be clear, you're not proposing that? That's right. So okay. on April 7th, um, we published a notice of receipt of this petition and a request for public comments on the petition. This is different from a proposed rule. Uh, we will consider all these comments and available in information when determining whether to accept the petition and proceed with rulemaking. And industry and anglers um, can provide public comments on the petition by July 6th of this year. So as of right now, just to be clear, for those that are interested, you will be open to seeing their positions. And then just kind of where you're at right now, are you waiting to get all of that before you guys decide on how you're gonna proceed forward? That's correct. Okay. Um, my next question is, just out of curiosity, are you aware of why those NGOs suggested the 10 knots, why not eight or 12 in regards to that speed limitation? Um, I'm gonna uh, pass it off to my colleague, Deputy Assistant Administrator Rob to answer okay. that question. Yes, thank you for that question, Congresswoman. We've been exploring the interactions between whales and vessel speed uh, for many years. We've got a rule from 2008 that addresses vessel speed on the Atlantic seaboard and it sets it at 10 knots because there is scientific information that indicates that a whale may be able to survive a strike if it is 10 knots or less, whereas if it's 10 knots or more, the whale is likely to uh, be severely injured or die. And so that is why it's 10 knots, to, I presume. I, well, that's I just proposed, it's not official yet, so we can still have people write in if they have different Yeah, I mean, I should, I should clarify, I do not know why the NGOs chose that number. They have not talked with us about okay. that. Okay. <laughs> I'm presuming they are basing it off of our Atlantic seaboard rule, which is 10 knots. Okay. But absolutely, we will take all comments on that. And just because we're short on time, my last question is for direct, Director Williams. I've been a previous... Uh, hearing discussed the Sand Key Beach Renourishment Project in my district. And the last update that I received was that um, USFWS received a request from the Army Corps of Engineers for a consultation on the Sand Key Project. Um, has that happened yet? Thank you for that question, Congresswoman. Um, is this the project that I was so nice to visit with you on the phone? So we yes. did, I'm, so that's happened very quickly. I'm glad to hear that. And we will respond um, immediately if we haven't already. OK, all right. Thank you very much. Chairman, I yield my time. Uh, thank you, uh, 
Chair recognizes Congressman Mast for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks for allowing me to sit on committee with you all today. I come from TNI and Foreign Affairs, and I think at TNI we we.